Hey everybody, welcome to the Pet Food Puzzle Guy. And uh, I didn't plan on doing a video this week. Um, it's just been a very, very rough week in the United States of America. Um, it is September 13th and uh, it's just been a, a rough week. And uh, so it really wasn't in the mood, but there is some uh, new information out there. And uh, one thing you learn about life is life goes on. So. Um, I wanted to go ahead and put this information out because uh, there is a new new bladder stone that has been discovered by the Minnesota Urolith Center, and uh, it has to do with certain diets out there that contain a certain ingredient. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump right in. I want to show it to you, and uh, I will just describe it a little bit, and then I'll uh, link the full article uh, that was published back in April in the uh, Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine, and you can go ahead and Read all the details yourself. So this was uh, published back in April of this year in Minnesota Urolith Center. They are the um, kind of quintessential uh, urinary stone center of the world kind of in it uh, dr osborne was there for for years when i was with hills now dr lulich uh is the director and um so i will publish the whole article but basically what happened was they started seeing uh this new type of bladder stone and i'm i'm gonna say the name of it uh it's, it's a tough one it's not it's not like struvite or calcium oxalate it's calcium tartrate tetrahydrate so it's ctt for short so these uh, uh ctt stones a um, couple things from the article from the the study that was done it is primarily small breed dogs that are starting to get uh, these stones these crystals and stones and uh, primarily males about 83 percent of the cases they got uh, that they saw were males and again mostly small breed dogs so if you have small breed uh, males and especially those few breeds that are prone to urinary stones uh, it did say in the article that these ctt stones are very similar to calcium oxalate stones and that kind of makes sense because we have the average age of dogs coming down with these new bladder stones uh, the average age was 9.4 or 9.7 years old uh, and calcium oxalates are a old dog stone usually as well sometimes accompanied with kidney disease i think i think a few dogs had kidney disease uh with these stones as well but that wasn't a causal thing that was just <clears throat> came along with the age um so there you go and the one thing i don't like about calcium oxalates and now these new ctt stones is they will not dissolve we can't dissolve them like we can with diet with struvite uh crystals and stones, these have to be removed surgically. So this is a pretty serious deal. So on this channel, we talk about the different nutrients that uh, put a cat or dog at risk for uh, calcium oxalate stones or struvite crystals. And um, usually it's looking at magnesium and phosphorus and calcium and things like that. Um, the culprit, it seems to be, according to uh, what Minnesota Urolith Center is saying, and of course there'll be ongoing studies, but it's an ingredient called choline bitartrate so i don't know if i'm saying that right but choline bitartrate is the one ingredient that they found in many of the, the dogs whose owners worked with them as far as you know what diet were they feeding and that 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 turned out to be the the one thing that they all had in common and um so uh this ingredient um they were saying in in the article that uh, fresh foods and um uh fresh uh homemade uh, recipe supplements are very uh heavy with this ingredient i shouldn't say heavy that that most of those foods and those supplements have this one ingredient in them and uh sure enough uh, it's just like i put on my thumbnail uh, nom nom farmer's dog and um what was it just food for dogs i looked at their ingredient panel it, it was in the article claiming these foods had this ingredient but i thought well let me go and look at their ingredient panel just to make sure before i did this video and sure enough i'll put it up here i'll, I'll put up each one of them but um you will see if you look at the ingredient panel uh you know there it is there's that one ingredient uh and 
it's in all three of their diets. Now, I'm not going to go look at other uh, foods. Uh, I know some of you will do <laughs> do that. And that's great. Please report back if you find that. Now, the article was saying it seems to be uh, an ingredient that's used in fresh foods and homemade uh, formulations. Um, I I don't know if that's true or not. I guess I would say for all of you in the nutrition mission, go grab the bag of food or can that you're feeding and look for this choline bitartrate to see if it's in your food. Um, because it would be good that at this channel, we're kind of small, not as big as some of the others, but we can put the word out there that, hey, it's not just these fresh food diets, it's actually in some kibble. At this point, the uh, uh, Minnesota didn't say anything about finding it in kibble. It wasn't in the dogs that were that they uh, found the stones in. It was these fresh, uh, slowly cooked or you know, fresh diets that we're all familiar with. So, um, so am I saying you should not feed these three diets because of this ingredient? Um, well, I guess I could say why would you take the risk, especially if you have a small breed male dog. Uh, or, or, and definitely if you have any uh, dog that's ever had crystal urea uh, of any kind, struvite, calcimoxa, whatever, I definitely would want to avoid this ingredient in those diets. Uh, I would imagine those diets are probably going to go ahead and change that ingredient and find an alternative source for the um, whatever it is, the nutrient that they're putting in there. Uh, so, but having said that, <laughs> again, I'm kind of just to be open here. Um, the one thing I don't like about these three diets that are mentioned here uh, in the article are because they are all life stage foods. So even if they pull out this choline by tartrate, they still have nutrient levels, especially mineral levels that are high enough for growing puppies. And we don't want to be feeding that to adult dogs, worse yet, older dogs. Okay. Um, that is just something that's basic nutrition, not even dealing with this issue. And if you remember, Dr. Ray was the first to show this on her channel, uh, that warning from the farmer's dog that was in the vet portal, not in the consumer uh, website, but in the vet portal, saying that, hey, if you have any dogs, now let's see if I can remember now, that were prone to uh, urinary stones or protein issues or pancreatitis, um, what else? There was probably a few others there. Um, that you should not feed their food. So this was farmer's dog. If your animal was prone, dog was prone to these issues. And of course, the first thing I said was, okay, that makes sense. Why? Because these are all life stage foods. They're high in all those minerals. They're high in fat. So all the, the risks that they're talking about in this warning are totally true. Uh, but again, as a pet parent to pet parent, how do I know my dog is prone to urinary stones until they have urinary stones? Now, just like these CTT stones, these have to be surgically removed. I'm sure none of these people, uh, I think it was 63 dogs total that came into the Minnesota Urolith Center with these new stones. Um, if you would ask them before, is your dog prone to urinary stones? They probably would have said no. Uh, protein issues. Well, the excess protein in farmer's dog at, at puppy levels, um, well, that's not going to harm most dogs. But if your dog is, is one of the, what, two out of five that's going to come down with kidney issues, yeah, just like their vet portal warning is saying, you really don't want to feed this food. And if you looked at the nutrient numbers of farmer's dog versus Ollie and Nom Nom and just food for dogs, you find what? They're all excessive in those minerals and in those macro nutrients like fat and protein. Why? Because they have to meet the energy needs and the nutritional needs of a growing puppy. So why would you feed that to your adult dog? So I'm not a big fan of any of those diets. And of course, you know, I don't like their misleading marketing and advertising that I think is despicable, but so be it. Uh, here's a new reason that I don't like their foods. So that's Dr. Lulich and the Minnesota Urolith Center telling you this. It's not Glenn, the pet food puzzle guy. So I don't want to get myself in trouble uh, for saying anything that's not true out there. And I am going to attach that um, in the description. I'll put in the article that was in the journal so that if you want to read more details and uh, definitely something to be aware of. So again, you small, small dog folks out there, um, I've seen of Cindy at the 
was a Midwest uh, Yorkies, um, she might want to be looking into that article. So thank you all for, for listening, and uh, we will catch you on the next video. Take care, everybody.